I remember one day just feeling like my foot had fallen asleep. And so uh, that went on for several months and tried to figure out what was going on, physical therapy and all that. And eventually I went to a specialist, had an MRI done, and that's whenever the diagnosis came back that I had cancer. And I was about, I just turned 30 at that, at that time. So it was quite a shock to get that diagnosis, especially you know, knowing what I know about cancer and having worked in cancer uh, for a long time to then get that diagnosis, it was, it was pretty devastating. So I had a rare form of cancer called chondrosarcoma uh, that occurred in my sacrum and ilium, so basically the base of the spine. And whenever I started looking around for doctors, you know, the, the H. Lee Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa where I was has a great facility, great surgeons there, but they didn't have anybody there that thought they could save my leg. So I ended up going to the one place I could find where they said that they would salvage the leg and that was in Boston at Mass General Hospital. And so that's what took me up there. Um, so I, I ended up going to Mass General Hospital for several reasons. They had a, a clinical trial ongoing where they were actually irradiating using radiation therapy on the tumor and that's something that is normally not done for this type of cancer but they were getting some really good success where um, their, their rates of recurrence, local recurrence of the cancer was almost minimal doing this, this radiation treatment that they had. So that was another reason I went up there is they had some emerging, uh, emerging therapies that were available. Yeah, so having cancer I think um, gives you a little bit of a new perspective. You know, I, went to, I went to work every day walking past the, the clinic and seeing the patients and you know, I knew a little bit about their plight but it's whenever you peel back the veil and you, you emerge on the other side of that as a, as a cancer patient, it gives you an entirely new uh, respect for what cancer patients go through. And so it was, it was very eye-opening and there was a time where it was, it was difficult for me to go to work and uh, do what I do, uh, simply because thinking about cancer on a day-to-day -day basis, looking at things like Kaplan-Meier curves and wondering where you're going to be at on that survival curve. It, it can be a, a little bit uh, daunting mentally. But ultimately I, I just had to make the decision that you know, this is what I was trained to do, this is what I'm good at. If what I do over the entire lifetime of my career can help just one patient, then I feel like I've, I've given something back to the cancer community. So my motivation is, you know, just to try to give back a little bit. Um, my, during my treatments as a patient, I had a lot of help from family and from friends and from doctors who were doing these, you know, breakthrough therapies. And I want to be able to, you know, provide that to somebody as well. You know, if you, the, one of the most precious things to a cancer patient is time. You really don't appreciate time until you start to see where it might end. And so giving patients hope, giving patients a couple more days of hope and survival is just, it's a great thing that I'd like to be a part of. These, uh, these fundraising movements like the Cattleman's Ball are an absolute godsend to the research community here. Uh, we recently had uh, multiple grants, about 12 grants that were funded because of the uh, the Cattleman's Ball and the funds that they raise. And so those are going to be um, 12 projects that would not have probably been funded otherwise or at least gives us some startup funds to try new things and be creative and, and try to come up with new avenues of research to follow. And without that type of local support um, it would be difficult to do those. And right now the funding situation from the NIH has been not very good. It's been very difficult to get uh, these federal grants. And so by having a, a local community that really supports the cancer center, and, and not just for the Buffett Cancer Center, but this is really anywhere in the country, we have to have this local grassroots support to really um, help some of us along and, and test new theories and new ideas that would otherwise be impossible.